Can everyone please put your hands together for Dr. Mario Gondi? Morning, Campion. Um, thanks, Delano, for that introduction. It really reminds me of how old I am, because I know a bunch of those names. You guys were like, who? What? Maybe, maybe your parents know some of these people, but um, again, my name is Dr. Mario Guthrie, and most of that bio that you heard was a musical bio. It mentioned nothing about me being a medical doctor. So I am also a medical doctor. But before I start, I'd just like to acknowledge the principal, Mrs. Bastan, um, Vice Principal, Mr. Henry, um, teachers, staff, I'd like to thank Mr. Goff for bringing me back to Campion because I'm a proud Campionite. 1656 Xavier all the way by us. Parents, and of course students. Third farmers, how are you feeling today, all right? Oh gosh, come on, the better than that. How are you feeling today? We're going to change the energy of this thing. So today the theme is I think I learn I choose and they have invited me here to share my story with you because this entire topic is my life and I'm going to try and keep it pretty simple because we don't have a lot of time right so you guys know Steve Jobs right this is a popular quote from Steve Jobs he says the only way to do great work is to love what you do your work is going to fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. And if you haven't found it yet, you need to keep looking and never settle. And that has been my life again. I'm gonna play a part of a video for you. I want you to just listen carefully to it because it's kind of cool and then we're gonna come back to it a little later. I am part of a lost generation and I refuse to believe that I can change the world. I realize this may be a shock, but happiness comes from within is a lie and money will make me happy. So in 30 years, I will tell my children they are not the most important thing in my life. My employer will know that I have my priorities straight because work is more important than family. I tell you this, once upon a time, families stayed together. But this will not be true in my era. This is a quick fix society. Experts tell me 30 years from now, I will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of my divorce. I do not concede that I will live in a country of my own making. In the future, environmental destruction will be the norm. No longer can it be said that my peers and I care about this earth. It will be evident that my generation is apathetic and lethargic. It is foolish to presume that there is hope. And all of this will come true unless we choose to reverse it. All right, we're going to stop it right there, right? That's your generation that they're talking about. <laughs> Apathetic, lethargic. You guys will have divorces in a couple of years. Things are going to be crazy. But um, we're going to come back to that. I wanted to break down the theme, and I think they chose, I think, I learn, I choose. And the I is very important because the I is to emphasize that you are the one who is in control of the choice. So I believe that's what the I is. To think is to direct one's mind towards someone or something. Use one's mind actively to form connected, connected ideas. So you guys need to really spend some time thinking about what it is that you really want to do. You're not too young to think about it. And um, some of you are probably pretty sure about what you love already. But because of higher influences, aka parents, people pay the bills, put the roof over your head. Um, it might be a little muddled right now. Um, with respect to I learn, to learn is to gain knowledge or skill by studying, practicing, being taught, or experiencing something. Anything that you're going to be good at in life, you're going to have to practice and work really hard at it. Um, any other musicians that you love, John Legend, anybody you can call, as much as they may have appeared to be an overnight success, there were many years of work that went into becoming what they are. Most of you have probably never seen or heard of me ever, but I've been performing for many years. And I'm probably gonna sing for you later. And to choose to pick out someone or something as being the best 
or most appropriate of two or more alternatives. So you guys have to pick subjects right now, so you have to choose top five or top six. You guys have to pick the best ones. It's a very important time for you. We'll talk more about that. So I'm gonna be a little interactive. I want to know, what would you do as a career if you didn't have to worry about being paid? If money wasn't an issue, what would you want to do? I'm gonna ask some people. Ah, uh, this gentleman here. What's your name? Oh, Aubrey J. You, you want to be a janitor? Why you want to be a janitor? This man likes to sweep. I'm getting somewhere with this. Where I'm trying to get is that he likes to sweep and sweeping makes him happy. And if he can, if he is happy when he's sweeping, that's the first step. But can you imagine if he can be paid to sweep? Even better, right? Eh? Um, somebody on this side. She said she'd like to be a vet. Why would you want to be a vet? Because you love animals. It doesn't have to be complicated, it's simple. That means that when you're picking subjects, you're gonna pick. Hey, <laughs> that means when you're picking subjects, you're gonna pick at least which ones? Maybe bio would be a good choice, yeah? Somebody in the back, I saw someone on back there. I saw a hand there. Speak loud. Go on again. A portable? A portable beverage mixologist. <laughs> AKA a bad juice vendor is what your colleagues say you want to be. And if that makes you happy, you need to pick maybe chemistry so you can make some compounds. But I, but I like it. You're on, my, you're on the same page as me. So now I'm going to share a bit of my story, right? I call it the evolution of me. So I'm Dr. Guthrie on one hand. On the other hand, I am Mario Evan, the reggae soul singer. Ooh, mysterious. So here is my story. That baby is me. You would never imagine that that baby is this person. Exactly. Um, people thought I was half Chinese, and that's fine. I'm not. And that baby became that guy. The colors are not projecting well. That is me, I'm Mona Prep. Mona Prep? All right. Um, I was the head boy, that's me in grade six. At this point, I have no idea what I want to do, but I just started singing at grade seven. And I was, sorry, from grade seven. Mona Prep Choir was the first time I started to sing. And prior to that, I used to be like, in my era, I was listening to Mariah Carey and those kind of things. And I was trying to mimic everything that they did on the radio. So you never really, realize that you were actually living your dream in a weird way, but you were practicing to sing. That is me in first form. It kind of gives away the era. I'm not telling you my age, but these hairstyles are coming back right now. And I had one when they were really in. So um, yeah, kid and play, so people know some stuff. So that's the, that's the 90s. <laughs> now we move on to when I was in third form. Actually, I think I looked best at third form. That's just me being not so modest. But um, that's me in third form. And I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I decided to play with the theme. I thought I was clueless. I had no idea. Serious, blank. As many of you probably are blank right now, it's kind of an early stage to choose. You're under a lot of pressure. I don't want you to feel pressured by it, but I do want you to put some serious thought into it because it becomes very important. I learned a bit of everything. I picked TD instead of French back then. You guys still have that? <laughs> TD. And to all the boys who pick French, you still manly men, don't feel no way about it. Big up yourself. And I chose split between everything. I split between sciences and business. That's where my mind was. And I picked TD because I like to draw and I didn't want to make those weird sounds with my throat. Um, so um, that's me in fifth form because back then we took pictures every two years. Same thing. I decided to pick biochemistry and physics, science. My brother who was older than me did business. I did accounting and POB. I split that even. I never want to have to be confused. So I said, business or science? Because I don't know. We move on. So I thought maybe sciences, maybe business. 
I learned about sciences and I learned about business and I chose sciences. So at this point I was moving to sixth form and with a little gentle nudging because my father is a doctor, someone said you should do the sciences and not take over your father practice. <laughs> I'm from the generation of, yeah, that one. Granted I wasn't forced but um, it really warms my heart to hear Mrs. Boston talk about being you, about choosing something that you love. When I was in high school, I had no one telling me that at all. I mean, it is such a big deal. I mean, my heart beat fast to hear it. It's just rare. People telling you to, you have mixology as something to see later on today. Like, you could be a bartender. I always wanted to be a waiter. I just thought I'd get good tips because I'm friendly. But nobody's going to encourage you to be a waiter. And um, I'm currently a doctor musician person, as I call myself. And um, people come up to me every day and they say, Oh, you, you dash with the medicine? Oh, so you make any money in the music? We'll talk more about that. We move on. That is me at sixth form. The boy is becoming a man. And, um, all right, we jump, we jump a couple of steps. So, third form, businesses and sciences to split even. Sixth form, I was nudged a little bit. I decided not to do business, I went sciences. The limited mindset of how we can be at times in our culture, I decided do sciences. And then what next? Do medicine, obviously. You go to camp and you do sciences. I don't want to be a biologist. Who's a biologist? Um, so I need to be a doctor. Father's a doctor, it makes sense. Went to UA, slaved for one year, transferred into medical school. I was deferred for one year, actually. And in that one year, I worked with the government and I also performed with Jamaica Musical Theatre Company. I did Lion King. And that was when things started to get even more blurry. I touched the stage, I saw the lights, all those rehearsals, I was on cloud nine. This was, this was when I actually knew for sure that I had to be a performer. And it was kind of ironic that I was already in medicine and waiting to start because I was very confused. Um, so day one of medicine, I was a nervous wreck because in my heart, I knew that I wanted to be a performer. I saw Justin Timberlake and Usher somewhere in the, fore, the forefront of my mind. But right now I'm about to embark on five years of book work. Five years of book work that would prevent me from being a Justin Timberlake or Usher because it's a lot of work. And I decided to continue when I completed it, right? So what happens to me now, this young man here, is the doctor. This is me after medical school. And I worked for a few years. And then somebody says, so what do you want to do next? And they wanted me to say I'm going to specialize and become a gynecologist like my father. At which point I said, I want to sing. And the nurse in the, in the room laughed at me. She actually laughed, she laughed, because she thought it was a joke. And then my mad head take me, and this is when I started to make decisions. I was earning a, a salary, so I had money. I heard about this school called Berklee College of Music in Boston, one of the best contemporary music schools possibly in the world. And people kept telling me about it, so I went online. Thankfully, I had the internet. And um, I researched the school. I applied for the school. I got an audition date in Boston. I bought a plane ticket. I told my parents I am going to audition for music school. Granted, at this time, I am not 13, so it's a little bit different. At this point, I am going to share with you. You guys cannot tell my age. I will come and find each of you. At this point, I'm 27. I'm still 27, clearly. But at this point, I'm 27 when I have finally decided that it's time for me to follow my dream. 27. I've been singing from seven. I've been on campion choir, university singers, JMTC, wedding singer, choir voice singer, background singer. It just continued to brew in the background and it brewed and it brewed and it brewed and it will brew and it will bite you and it will bite you every day and it will bite you till you die. And some of your parents can agree. I'm sure some of them are doing things that they like, that they don't love. Um, but they love you guys very much, so they're going to continue working because they have to pay the bills. But um, if they were to go back and change things, there might be something else that they may, they may have wanted to do. Because they definitely came from an era where they didn't have as much choice as you guys have. 
So consider yourselves privileged and think very hard about these subjects because they will impact on the next step. We move on. So after medical school, I was just telling you about this, I was thinking about music and sometimes medicine because I liked medicine but I didn't love medicine. I'd always love music. I always secretly knew I loved music but I just never really tapped into it because it seemed intangible for a little Jamaican boy to go to Berkeley College of Music. Why would a little Jamaican boy want to go and become a Sean Paul or a Usher? It makes no sense. So I chose medicine and music which is where I am now. Berkeley College of Music, spelled B-E-R-K-L-E-E, -E, after the name of someone named Berkeley, is in Boston. That is me, a couple pound savior with a lot more hair, singing on stage in the Berkeley Performance Center, which was like a big deal over there. Down at the bottom is me and the actress Susan Sarandon. You guys know Susan Sarandon? She's older, but she's still in movies now. I was a tour guide at Berkeley, so I got to do some special tours. I'd meet some famous people from time to time, so that was kind of cool. Delano mentioned something about Apollo. So let me give you a little history on the Apollo. It is a theater in Harlem. A lot of the biggest stars have passed through there, from Michael Jackson to Lauryn Hill. Almost anybody with a name has been to the Apollo. If you do a really bad job at the Apollo, they boo you. And they're allowed to boo you. If you do a good job, you move on. So, remember, I'm a doctor. Then I went to music school. And then I lived in New York for a year, and I auditioned for the Apollo. And... According to your hopes, your excitement, your enthusiasm, first place goes to... Mario Emma! clear picture here for you and and the key to the picture I'm painting is that you can change what the picture looks like on the canvas from now because I took a while to change my canvas and my canvas continues to change um, it continues to evolve it never stops never ever stops you continue to learn and you continue to think and you continue to choose and um, right now I think I can make it really big because that's what you need to think no matter how old you are you need to think that it's yours for the taking. Always, never ever let anybody make you feel like you can't get it. You can't get it. I learned that anyone can get anything they truly believe in. Maybe not anything you want, but if you believe in it enough, you will make all the right steps to get it. And I chose to be that person who can get anything they truly believe in. Limitless and fearless. Fear is the crippler of all things, because when you're afraid, you will find any way to back out. So, remember that you have one life to live. I have one quick story on, on a campaign night when I was here. There was a young campaign night by the name of Michael Barnes. He had the voice of an angel. I mean, he sang, I don't know, I was older than him and I wanted to work with him as an artist. I was just dream, dreaming of the day me and Michael could work. And if Miss, Miss Armstrong is here, you can ask her about Michael Barnes. Michael was a Christian, 
and Michael will sing at every company event. I can't even talk about it, I will talk quick because it's still. Anyway, Michael had a car accident. Car flipped over. There were probably three people in the car. Michael was the only one that died, and he was probably in second form at the time. I don't talk, I can't do this. Long and short of it is one life to live, tomorrow is not guaranteed. Live it and live it well because you never know. So make right choices, enjoy it. Uh, rest in peace, Michael. And I feel like Michael had already fulfilled his purpose, strangely enough, because we all knew that he was this amazing singer. He was this beautiful person and um, he transitioned. But I feel like somehow God was ready to take him because what he had done, he had inspired so many people. I still talk about Michael now. So I'm inspired by him and he's, he moved on. So the message in the Michael story is you need to achieve your true self and find your purpose. Michael probably found his purpose. And I don't feel like they'll take, he'll take you away until you find your purpose. So keep searching for your purpose. This is me, the doctor over here and the musician over here. I am of both both minds. I go to Bustamante Children's Hospital at 2 o'clock today to work in the emergency department for 8 hour shift till night time. But last night I was at Scotia Bank performing at a corporate function for money. So I get paid to sing now and I also get paid to be a doctor. And I have made decisions that have allowed me to put my foot on both sides. So you can do both. You can do everything you want to do. And the message, the messages are, choose what you love, not necessarily what you're good at. Mr. Henry did say choose what you're good at, but hopefully what you're good at is what you love. They can't tie in, but make sure you enjoy it. Try something that you think may get you to your love, even if you think you're not good at it. No mental blocks. So you want to be a vet, but you're not good at bio? I say pick bio, because you want to be a vet. Try it, especially if you've never done it before. You can really do it all, you can. Have a plan, and don't worry because life allows you to edit it. You need a plan, have a game plan. My game plan has changed. I was supposed to be a gynecologist or something like that. But I just throw a wrench in it, a wrench in it and just mess it up. And now everybody confused, but guess what? I am happy at the end of the day. I've never been happier. And you define your own success, not your parents. So anything is a success. You get a B in chemistry, if you feel good about it, is a success. Not because it was not A. You define it. I've gone 21 minutes and I have 20 minutes. I mean, keep it moving. We're almost finished. Back to the Steve Jobs quote. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. Now we're going to see the rest of this video. I am part of a lost generation and I refuse to believe that I can change the world. I realize this may be a shock, but happiness comes from within is a lie and money will make me happy. So in 30 years, I will tell my children they are not the most important thing in my life. My employer will know that I have my priorities straight because work is more important than family. I tell you this, once upon a time, families stayed together. But this will not be true in my era. This is a quick fix society. Experts tell me 30 years from now, I will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of my divorce. I do not concede that I will live in a country of my own making. In the future, environmental destruction will be the norm. No longer can it be said that my peers and I care about this earth. It will be evident that my generation is apathetic and lethargic. It is foolish to presume that there is hope. And all of this will come true unless we choose to reverse it. There is hope. It is foolish to presume that my generation is apathetic and lethargic. It will be evident that my peers and I care about this earth. No longer can it be said that environmental destruction will be the norm. In the future, I will live in a country of my own making. I do not concede that 30 years from now, I will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of my divorce. Experts tell me this is a quick fix society, but this will not be true in my era. Family stayed together once upon a time. I tell you this, family is more important than work. I have my priorities straight because my employer will know that they are not the most important thing in my life. So in 30 years, I will tell my children, money will make me happy is a lie, and true happiness comes from within. I realize this may be a shock, but I can change the world, and I refuse to believe that I am part of a lost generation. So um, I thought that video was very relevant to you guys. 
you can't change the world. And guess what? I'm almost done. So those pieces of paper in your hand, you can sign up for it if you'd like to be a part of my mailing list. So there's a perforation at the bottom. Just write your name and your email. And what I send out is when I have performances or any updates on the musical side. I'll come around and collect them after. The flyer is yours to keep. And um, right now I'm going to sing a song. And if you'd like to follow me, that's my website and all the social media. And I thought it would be cool for us to use the hashtag, I choose me, not me, but you. So when you guys get a chance to pick up your phones and go on a computer, tweet something about today, at Mario Evan, and um, I'll talk back to you on Twitter. Without further ado, let's get to some music. <laughs> You guys probably know this song, right?
Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to...